My name is Rebecca Rose and this is Real Opinions. Hello, I'm Rebecca Rose and I'm, I live in Dorset, but I am very much a nomad, like I'm sure we all are and travel everywhere, but you know, my home is in Dorset. Um, I am predominantly a director. I do, my background is at first AD and then before that I was an actress, but you know, I'd like to say director now. How did you end up doing what you do now? So I was I was an actress for many, many years um, in in theatre and TV and film. And, and I loved it. It was it was something that I always wanted to do. And I, and I was fortunate that I, I was a jobbing actress, you know, for, for many years. And then but directing has always been very much kind of something, especially in theatre, that I would find myself being drawn to and devising and improvising and so at the back of my mind at some point I thought okay you know I want to I want to direct so I had years as an actress and then had a family I've got three children and when they were little carried on acting but I didn't want to be away on tour I just wanted to to be more at home and, and obviously be with my children so I um started running drama classes with for, for children, which would kind of, you know, help with me being at home. And then I just, you know, I think I just hit a time when they got a little bit older, I thought, right, okay, I need to reassess my life and what's happening in the direction I'm going. And I just thought, this is it. This is, I, I, I really want to get into directing in TV and film. And, uh, but it wasn't simple. I can just go off to film school or not earn any money. I had to earn money. So I kind of looked at the, the industry and thought, what department suits me and where could I learn from a director? And that was the um, assisting directing department an AD department. So um, I still had lots of friends in the business and you know, it wasn't as easy as just picking up the phone, getting a job. I really did write, call people a lot before I got my first job as an AD. Um, and because by that time I was kind of in my 30s, lots of life skills, experience and, you know, years of being an actress. I I was a floor runner for one job and then quickly just stepped up to be a third AD. And then gradually to uh, become a first AD and worked in drama and feature films. Um, and so over the years, I've shadowed some incredible directors. And, um, you know, I, th I think for me, how I work as a person, I like to know how everything works. And I'm a very much love collaborating and um I'm a team player, you know. So that whole kind of foundation the, these last few years was vital for me to then bring that wealth of experience as an AD to the floor as a director. So um, about, gosh, how many years ago? A year and a half ago, I started prepping my short film, Wake, um, because I just thought, you know what, I've, I've got to now take this step back and start directing because... You know, I think when you're working in the industry as well, a lot of ADs, you don't get the recognition as a <laughs> director's good because obviously you are not the director, you're the AD. However, ADs do so much. And, and certainly in, in dressing background, in blocking all the, the essays, and that was that's something that I love doing and I still love doing now. So if I get a job, I will go and have a couple of days on a big shoot working with background. Um, and I just thought, I'm doing all this work, but I'm not the director, I'm not getting the recognition. So I said, right, okay. I'd written a script. So I wrote it with my husband, um, who's in the business, and we produced it um, and got it on its feet. And that's where I am today. What's the best piece of advice you've been given? I think, in all honesty, in terms of, of advice, I... 
I would say at the beginning of my career, I when I certainly when I was an actress, um, and I didn't know anybody in the industry. I, I come from a very supportive, amazing family who are um, just been incredible, and I couldn't do my job without them. However, nobody was in the business, so it was. I think the way I've been brought up is with a very strong work ethic. And certainly as an actress, you know, all that rejection that you have has really made me who I am. You know, I'm quite a strong person. Um, And I think that's helped as a director as well. And certainly as an assistant director. So in terms of advice, I think it might have to be my parents, actually. They're very, very stoic, strong people who have that don't give up mentality. You know, you just keep going. And, and you will make something of yourself. So, yeah, it's my parents. It's not anybody in the industry. I mean, sit the, you know, I've got fantastic role models in the industry who always say you're doing great and are very supportive, but it has to be my parents, yeah. And on the flip side, what's the worst piece of advice that you've been told? The worst piece of advice was, or more the attitude rather, just slightly change was you can't work in this business, you have children. You know, oh, I was like, oh, but I'm here working in this industry with children. And it was very much like, well, no, you, you know, you can't. So uh, yeah, I proved them wrong. <laughs> um, it's interesting, because just on a side point, like childcare now is becoming so much more of a conversation in terms of a workplace, not necessarily just in film, but, you know, for from actors being on set and you know um, having childcare available to them because it is their job you know their job to turn up and be on set much like it is the first ad down to the runner um, and i think i do think that there's more um allowances given to larger roles uh in terms of a in a creative landscape you know i i doubt that Unfortunately, I doubt that anyone in catering would be given childcare support. Um, but, you know, in terms of like the top lead talent and the HODs, I can kind of definitely see that happening more and more now. Yeah. And, and funny, I had a, um, a message from a friend who's in the AD department and she's just had a baby. She had a baby about six months ago and she said, you know, I really want to get back into the business, but I... I've got to try and job share or do a couple of, you know, dailies. So you stepping in on different jobs um, each week just to do a couple of days. And I just said, and we have this AD group chat. Um, I said, you know, let's start a conversation on that because there will be other people who want to do that, you know. So, yeah, I think I think we've just got to kind of open that conversation a bit more as well. Is there a place or a location that you have always wanted to make a film? Storytelling is obviously so important, but I'm equally also drawn to landscape and whether it's, you know, an urban city or huge wild open spaces. Um, But I think ultimately Scotland would be somewhere I would absolutely love to shoot a film. Yeah, yeah, the Highlands, oh, definitely. It's got a lot of texture as well. Like, you know, if, if you want somewhere barren, isolated, you've got it. Definitely. Right, a few hours, you've got, you know, urban, sprawling city. Oh, it's just so majestic and beautiful, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and rainy, if you need it to and be. And rainy, yeah, definitely. But we can incorporate that rain in, it's fine. What do you want people to feel like when they've watched your work? I want people to be, to be moved. Because you know that that's to have that connection with the audience is is so important. But I also want to question. I want to question the audience and them to question my work and and what they see. When was the last time you felt proud? As a director, I certainly I I feel incredibly proud of of Wake of of writing, producing, and directing. And you know you you know that is that's a huge achievement. And I'm really proud of myself for that because. It, working as well being an AD and getting that off the ground yeah that was really special yeah what's the one thing that makes you disappointed about the film industry going back to what I said about the fact that you can't work in this industry if you've got children you know 
that was a couple of years ago when I first started working as an AD. So hopefully less people have that attitude now. But I think attitude towards supporting artists, they don't get enough recognition. They don't get, you know, I've, I've worked with some incredible directors and most of them are unbelievable. But, you know, I've worked with certain people who don't have seem to have any respect for those around them. And that really does really aggravate me, especially when, you know, that person is in the most unique position, but yet they don't seem to be aware of how hard people are working around them. So, yeah, that that's certainly... Yeah, I mean, and it's so difficult because it's a collaborative process. It is, it is, totally. Everyone's got their part to play, you know, no matter how small it is. You know, luckily, it's not it's not very often you, you meet people like that, but, you know, unfortunately, you still do. What's your drink of choice when you're working on set? I do like a ginger shot, you know, in the morning, and a nice latte. Nice. And, and how many coffees is too many coffees? Oh, definitely two is definitely, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Do yeah. you have a cutoff point of when you can't drink coffee? No. Oh, really? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I think probably two. If I if I go beyond two, I am, um, yeah, you have to scrape me off the ceiling. <laughs> do your parents understand what you do for a job? Oh, bless them. They do. Yes, they very much do. Yeah. And they are amazing. They have been so supportive and having my children are teenagers now, but when certainly when I, they were younger, I, I, could, I couldn't have done this without them. So I have a lot of respect. If you were stuck on a desert island, what one film would you take? Do you know, I absolutely love the film Erin Brockovich. And I know that's a little bit you know, you might not have expected me to say that. That's one of, but it is one of my favorite films because it's got, well, it's just an incredible film. Um, where do I start about Erin Brockovich? And even more prevalent now, just because there's more, there's more situations in terms of contaminated water with all the train, train wrecks happening. Definitely. But I just think as well that Eric, the actual character, she's just incredible. The strength. And, and I think, I certainly want to write now, I want, well, I've got lots of things that I'm working on, but just to the strength of that character as a, as a woman is just empowering. This is amazing. Do you collect anything? No, I don't. Did you collect anything as a child? Yeah, I did actually. I collected um, stones and fossils. Hmm. um yeah which actually my daughter now does so you know yeah which is not something I've inspired her to do it's just something she does which yeah it is quite amazing that I've never spoken to her about it about me collecting rocks but I used to collect rocks and fossils yeah do you still have them <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I really wasn't into them. It was just a bit of a trend, maybe. Oh, it's crystals as well. I think I was a bit of a crystal girl at some point. Yeah. 